long does the food stay in your stomach? Do you find yourself still hungry no matter how much or how often you eat? If so, you might be eating foods that are too high on the glycemic index. The glycema what a? I know, sounds complicated. It's basically how long it takes your body to digest different foods, and it's definitely something worth knowing if you're struggling with an insatiable appetite and excess weight. So, you ready to stop overeating, start having more energy throughout the day, and watch the weight melt off just by changing your diet? Well, just stay tuned. And don't forget that we have all kinds of helpful information like this here on the Bright Side of Life. So hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of all our daily uploads. All right, now let's cover the basics. The glycemic index is a system of values given to foods according to how quickly they cause an increase in blood glucose levels. To put that in layman's terms, it basically measures how fast different foods are digested by the body. You see, glucose is a simple sugar that gives your body energy, and you get it from the foods you eat. Your blood is what carries this sugar throughout your body to all your hungry cells and tissues. That's why it's called blood glucose. If you eat something that's high on the index, your blood glucose will spike, giving you a fast boost of energy. Uh, yeah, sign me up. Whoa, wait a second. It's not as cool as it sounds because this energy boost is short-lived and almost always followed by a crash. Like Isaac Newton said, what goes up must come down. That energy rush you get is a result of the food being digested quickly. Once that process is done, your fuel tank gets empty real fast. That means you'll be feeling hungry again sooner than you know it and heading right back to the fridge. In a nutshell, if you're eating lots of these fast digesting foods, you may find that you're eating way more than you should. Now, I'm not saying that the kitchen isn't my favorite place in the house, because it certainly is. But of course, we all know the main problem when it comes to spending too much time there. Getting into that vicious cycle of overeating high glycemic foods almost always leads to weight gain. Plus, since these foods have so much glucose in them, your body takes what it needs and then stores the rest as fat. Well, not unless you're one of those lucky people that eat what you want and don't gain an ounce. Anyway, as for the rest of us, added weight comes with health risks like cardiovascular disease, kidney failure, and diabetes. So it's better to avoid these foods or consume them in moderation. On the flip side, foods that are low on the index release glucose, aka fuel for your body, in a slow and steady manner. And since these foods are metabolized slowly, they take a while to leave your digestive system, which means you feel full for longer and won't need to constantly overeat just to keep your body going. But the glycemic index is a bit more complex than just high and low. Foods and drinks are actually split into three groups, low, medium, and high. Low items rate from 1 to 55, medium is from 56 to 69, and high items are from 70 and above. If you're not sure about a certain food, you can always look up its glycemic value on the internet. Now that you know all the technicalities and terminology, let's just see how different foods rate on the scale. Number 1. Foods that digest slowly – low glycemic value Vegetables, like green leafy veggies, boiled or raw carrots, vegetable soups, and plantains. Most fruits, such as raw apples, oranges, mangoes, canned peaches, apple juice, and orange juice. Foods with complex carbs, which include whole grain breads, flatbread, barley, sweet corn, spaghetti, oatmeal, and noodles. Dairy, that's whole milk, skim milk, and yogurt. Nuts and legumes, like cashews, peanuts, chickpeas, and most beans. Number 2. Foods that digest moderately, a medium glycemic value. Vegetables like sweet potatoes and pumpkins. Fruits that include bananas, dates, kiwi, pineapple, and watermelon. Moderate carbs, such as boiled brown rice and couscous. Cereals, which include wheat flake biscuits and muesli. Honey, sodas, popcorn, and potato chips also make this list. Number 3. Foods that digest quickly, high glycemic value. Vegetables, like instant mashed potatoes and boiled potatoes. Simple carb foods, that's white bread and white rice. Cereals, such as rice porridge and instant oatmeal. According to the experts at Bodytomy, some low glycemic foods, like cooked vegetables or a salad, can remain in your stomach anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. 
That doesn't seem very slow, especially when you compare it to more glycemic potatoes, which take your stomach up to two hours to fully digest, but only end up spiking your blood sugar and giving you a short-lived boost of energy. Your stomach needs even more time, up to three hours, to break down low glycemic nuts. So you see, these foods can sit in your belly for different amounts of time, but it's the good low glycemic foods that keep your body energized for longer. There are also foods that don't really have a glycemic index value since they don't contain any carbs, but they can still take a while to be digested by your stomach. It can take you anywhere from two to five hours for your stomach to digest meats, like chicken, lamb, and pork. Seafood and fish, such as salmon, trout, and tuna, usually leave the stomach after about 40 minutes to an hour. Eggs, cheese, oils, and herbs also have a glycemic index of zero and get broken up by your gut pretty quickly. But fast digestion doesn't mean you'll be hungry soon. These foods are full of nutrients that your body needs. You might still be wondering, what about my favorite foods like pizza and burgers? The case for pizza is an interesting one. If you're having pizza that's just dough, cheese, and sauce, that might rate high on the glycemic index, mostly because of that dough. But believe it or not, adding toppings actually makes your slice healthier. A deluxe-style pizza with all the toppings can reduce glucose levels because the protein and fats in the toppings will slow down the process of breaking the food down into glucose. So go ahead and throw some mushrooms, bell pepper, and onions on your pizza. Not only will it taste better, it'll also keep you full for much longer. Just don't fall into the trap of thinking all low glycemic foods must be healthy. You might encounter foods that will be low on the index, but if they're processed, they most likely still contain tons of saturated fats, sugar, and empty calories. Take cheeseburgers, for instance. They rate pretty low on the glycemic scale, but this doesn't mean that big greasy burger is going to provide you with long-lasting energy or help you lose weight. You still need to be mindful of the nutritional value of foods, which the glycemic index doesn't tell you. For example, whole milk has a low glycemic value, but it's also high in fat, so it won't be suitable for weight loss. Plus, since low glycemic foods digest more slowly, if you eat only these types, you risk overworking your digestive system. Everything's about balance, you know? Also, keep in mind that the exact time it takes you to metabolize the foods we've mentioned today will also depend on your physical health, age, gender, activity level, and the general state of your digestive system. Now that you've learned all there is to know about digestion time for different kinds of foods, are you consuming low or high glycemic products? Will you change your diet after watching this video? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends to help them out too. Be sure to subscribe and join us on the Bright Side of Life.